Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on vectoring in Illustrator. This time I'm going to be talking about how you apply QD marks in different perspectives to ponies. This is something that took me a little bit to figure out and I had to have a lot of help with from the MLP Vector Club. But once I figured it out, it, it has always been simple to do ever since. So um, as you can see, I've already finished up the majority of the vectors for AJ and Rarity here. I've already scaled them up to uh, the full size that I'll be exporting them at from this original 1080p screen cap. Now, as you can see, Rarity has just a side profile view. So her cutie mark, which I have right here, is just a copy and paste. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I've already scaled it to size. So I just drag and drop and deselect. And there we go. However, Apple Jacks are a little bit more complicated. As you can see, they're kind of scrunched up and bent sideways a little bit from top to bottom to show the curve in her flank. So, this isn't going to fit perfectly because um, they're not vectored straight from this. I downloaded the QD marks from the MLP Vector Club's uh, resource files. I'll also link where I got these from so that everyone can uh, get a hold of whatever QD marks they might need if they're in the gallery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and copy or drag this over to where I needed to be on AJ. It's still not scaled properly. So I'm just going to go up here and transform and scale. Oops. As you can see, I'd already done it from that. So let's go back to 100% and go down from there. I think 90 might work. No. This takes a little bit of experimentation. 80 looks closer, but I'm going to drop it down to 70. And there's an option here to scale strokes and effects, and this is something that you need to have checked if you're ever going to scale a pony up from this to this, because it will scale the width of the strokes up along with any other effects that you have on there. If you don't, then your strokes are going to stay at roughly 4 to 5 at, from here all the way to here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this and I'm going to make it with a warp. Now I'm going to click preview so I can see what it's doing. And arc is not the effect that I want. What I actually want is arch. There's a slight difference in these, but I want to one. And the bend is too much. So I'm going to switch it over to vertical, which is what I want. So now the bend is going to look her flank shape. And I'm just going to play around with the bend amount until I get to where I want, and then rotate. This is a little bit too, wide, too large, so I'm just going to shrink it down. Now, I'm not going for perfect, I'm just going for close enough. So this will more than likely not look just like the way it is in the screen cap. And it's that simple. Typically, you should only ever have to use that one particular warp type, or that one particular distort, the arch. Um, if at any point you ever want to get rid of the envelope that it's in, all you have to do is click on this, go back to envelope distort, and re click release. Gets rid of the mesh, and there you go. Now it's back to what it was. Do not ever create the mesh, or create, uh, use the mesh options and then scale up because. For some reason, it just flattens the image into a scrunched up looking thing. Uh, let's see if I can demonstrate. Oh, no, not that. Sorry, misclick. It looks something like this. No idea why, but it does. 
So always apply the cutie marks once you've gotten it to the proper scale. And as far as I'm concerned, these two vectors are completely done. So I'm just going to hide this and I'm going to delete it and save this for the future. I will have this up on my DeviantArt page so you can play around with the warps, the meshes, all you want in my original files. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me and have a great night.